Hi, Tim Ungert here, and in this video, we're going to be making this landing page for this fake web design agency called Tim Web Design, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so on the top part, you'll have a navigation, then you'll have a, uh, a hero section with this unicorn highlighting some of the skills with the learn more button. Um, Below that, you'll have another section for simple websites where you have this HTML and CSS picture. Below that, um, you're gonna have a section with this WordPress picture, uh, talking about some of the things. You're gonna have a contact form. We're not gonna build the functionality into the contact form. It's going to have this submit section, and then we'll just have the simple footer below that, okay? So what this project is going to require is we're going to use Bootstrap, and you're also going to need to have Node installed because we are going to uh, install Bootstrap via Node, and we're going to use um, SAS. So you need SAS installed. So I'll include links on how to install SAS uh, if you want to. I I did it on a Chromebook, so it'll probably work the same. I've you know installed it on a Windows machine. It'll probably work the same or similar on whatever machine you're using. Uh, the installation process. Obviously, check it out. The SAS website, Dart SAS is what it's called, is what you want to install. Uh, for this project, we're only going to be using SAS to just change some of the primary and secondary colors, uh, the body color and that kind of thing um, to match these images. Okay. Now, uh, keep in mind when you, we're doing this, we're not going to be using the CDN. We're going to be converting the SAS file into our style sheet and uploading it that way. Now, there are some disadvantages to doing this. One being is that uh, users of our website, if this were your website, would come and have to download our, um, our style sheet. Now, this could be the same if they're getting it from a CDN, but typically if they're getting it from the CDN, they may have visited another website that used Bootstrap 5 and then their browser already had downloaded that. So that would lead to a little bit faster loading speed. That being said, I looked at the file size for a style sheet when it was fully compiled and it was about 183 kilobytes, which is about the size of a um, compressed medium size image. So it's not really going to change the speed of the loading, of the how fast the website loads that much. But if you are trying to optimize uh, your website for very um, low end devices, this may not be the best way to go. You may want to use the CDN and take a different approach. That being said, we're going to do this approach um, because on modern devices, it's not really going to make much of a difference and we're going to get started. All right. So let's uh, open up our terminal here and I have a projects folder. So I'm going to CD into my projects folder. And I'm going to make a directory called Tim Web Design. And I'm going to CD into Tim Web Design. And then I'm going to make two files. So I'm going to make an index.html file and a style.scss file. Okay. And uh, that's going to be our SAS file. That's going to be the one that we're going to convert. Okay. I am going to now go into my text editor. And I'm going to be using NeoVim for this. So I'm going to just type NVim and uh, hit enter. Okay. Now I have NerdTree installed. So I'm going to first go into our style.scss file. Okay. And we're going to, now we have to go and go to uh, Bootstrap. So you want to Google Bootstrap. Um, and then we can get Bootstrap. I want to go, let's see. I want to go to uh, the docs, um, go to get started. I want version five. Um, and I want to go to SAS. Okay. And it shows me some examples of the file structure. Okay. That's great. Um, but uh, that's not what I, what I really want um, because I'm going to just install node on the same, um, the same, well, yeah, I'm actually going to install it on the level of our project. So let me go here and actually let me bring up a terminal. Okay. And let me just type in npm install bootstrap. Okay. And that's going to go out and fetch bootstrap and install it. 
And now if I list my files, uh, you'll see that I have node modules, uh, package.json, a package lock.json, and I have my index.html and my style.scss. Okay, so we do want that. All right, so now I'm gonna exit from there, from the terminal, and I'm back in my style.scss uh, folder, okay? All right, uh, so now I'm gonna use uh, option one, which is not necessarily the recommended option. Again, this is importing all of Bootstrap, so it gives you that larger file. But again, on modern devices, looking at, I, I looked at the style, I'm like, is the style sheet gonna be that big? It is, I mean, 183 kilobytes is a lot larger than something I would write. You know, my big style sheets are maybe 20 kilobytes, but, um, or, or 10 kilobytes, but still, you know, when we're talking, some websites have pictures that are half a megabyte or 500 kilobytes, um, even when they're optimized, 183 kilobytes, eh. okay. Uh, so anyway, so I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna hit Control Shift V to paste it in and something weird is working with my paste. So I'm gonna have to, let me write this. That's, I don't know why it's doing that. Let me just highlight all of this, Control C. And let me get rid of this. And it is currently thundering quite a bit outside. So you may be hearing a thunder in the background. The power went out. And I don't know why it's not pasting incorrect. That's weird. Okay. Uh, all right. Let me just type it in. So we're going to go at import. Uh, and then we want to just have the node on the top level. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to hit delete letter there. Okay, and uh, there we go for that. All right, and let's put a comment that we're going to include the default. We're going to include the uh, override variables here. Okay, all right, so there's five variables I'm going to override. All right, and I I'll explain a little bit later how I picked these colors out, but uh, so I've got my body color, okay? That's gonna be 053742, okay? I've got my body background, whoops. That's going to be E8F0F2. Uh, I've got my primary that I'm color that I'm going to override. That's going to be uh, what is it? 6C6, 6C6, uh, 3FF. And I've got my secondary color I'm also going to override, uh, which is going to be 3F, 3D56. And then I've got my light color, which I'm going to override, which is just going to be F2, 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 okay? So I'm gonna now save that file. And what I'm going to do is bring back up that terminal. So I have it set up so I can just hit Control N and bring Then I want my regular style sheet, so style.css. I'm gonna hit Enter. And it'll take a moment and compile my style.css uh, sheet. So now it's done. I'm going to exit out of my terminal. And I am done with my SCSS file, my SAS file. Okay, and I'm going to go back and now start my index.html file. Okay. All right. All right, so I'm going to use Emmet here. I'm going to go into insert mode and use Emmet to just give me a general HTML outline. And I want a viewport tag. So I'm going to use Emmet to generate that. I also want a description tag. I'm going to use Emmet to generate that. And my description is going to be a simple landing page example. You can put whatever you want. This is what the search engines would uh, look at, um, call this Tim web design, call it whatever you want. Uh, this is technically the home page, So maybe you put home Tim web design, something like that. And I'm going to 
uh, bring in my style sheet. Put a little comment that this is my style sheet and just do link CSS. Okay, I used Emmet to do that. So um, the important part is we're linking in the style sheet. Now, if you included, included this in a CSS folder, you might have something like something like that, the path to the folder, but I just have uh, my style sheet. So um, it's on the same level, okay? This is just a simple landing page. If you're building a larger website, you do wanna organize your CSS, your JavaScript, and all that stuff into its separate components, okay? Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the getting started, and there is something that I need to do to um, get the mobile menu to work. I got a copy in this JavaScript bundle. I'm gonna put that right below the closing body tag. Uh, and I'm just gonna make a comment that this is bootstrap JavaScript. Okay, and then, so I wanna, uh, I wanna copy this in. Let me just paste that in. Okay, and we're good to go there. Okay, so we're we're getting there. We're getting uh, where we need to be. So, first thing I want to do is create our nav bar. So we're going to start our nav bar. I'll make a comment for that. Okay, and we're going to have a we're going to have a nav with a class of nav bar. We're going to have the class nav bar expand. Uh, LG, so that means after it goes from a large to a medium screen size, you'll see that uh, the nav bar, the nav menu closes up and you get the hamburger menu. Uh, the background, we want uh, nav bar light. Uh, so that means the text is light. And then background, we're actually going to do the primary color, which is that kind of purple that I picked uh, that we worked on in our SCSS file. Okay, so inside of that, we're gonna have a div with a class of container, okay? And then inside of that, we're gonna have a link with a couple of classes. Uh, this is gonna be our nav bar brand. We're gonna have our text, the color of secondary, okay? And our text is also gonna be uppercase. Give it a little bit more of a bold feel to it. Uh, the link, we're not going to have it link anywhere. Um, and we're going to call this Ac, not Acme Web, uh, Tim Web Design. Okay. And we're going to close out the link. And then below that, we're going to have a button. This is going to be our hamburger button. And it's going to have a class of navbar toggler. Okay. Uh, type is gonna equal uh, button. Data, we're gonna have data BS toggle uh, equals collapse. Okay, uh, data BS target. Now I took this from the examples. Um, it's gonna be hashtag nav bar. Let me see what I put here. my notes, nav bar text, okay, hopefully I spelled it right, um, aria controls, that's going to be the same thing without the hashtag, so just uh, nav bar text, in camel case there, aria expanded is going to be um, false to start, aria label is going to equal toggle navigation. Okay, so you have to put all these things in, um, but you can go, if you don't want to type this stuff out, you can go into components, go down here to, and th that's what I did. I mean, I'm just doing this for the tutorial, but I went down to the components um, and you go, ch -ch 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 -ch. I think I picked this one copied it and then you know deleted out the disabled part but so we have all this this stuff okay 
All right, so that's where I'm getting all this stuff from, okay? Uh, then inside of that, we're going to have a span with a class of navbar-toggle-icon. And we're going to close out that span. That's going to be the little hamburger. And we're going to close out our button, okay? And then within that, we're going to have a div with a class of collapse navbar collapse. So this next part, when it goes to a medium screen, will actually collapse. Uh, the navbar brand will be visible still, but this part of the menu will not, okay? Then we're gonna have an unordered list with a class of navbar nav, and then ms auto. And that's margin from the start auto, uh, that's going to give us the menu going to the right. So we're going to have our logo on the left and our menu on the right. So that's what the MS Auto is doing. Uh, and then we're going to have some list items. So we're going to have a list item with a class of nav item. Okay. And then within the list item, we're going to have an anchor tag with a class of nav link. Uh, this first one is going to be active and then text uppercase because I'm giving it more of a bold look. Okay. Uh, this first one's going to have also aria current equals page. And all our links here are going to be um, just not going anywhere. We're just doing this for demonstration purposes. And we're going to call this one home. Okay. So that's the page we're on. We're going to close out this link. All right, so what I'm going to do now is just copy this stuff. Okay. Uh, let's just do it one more time, I think. Okay, and um, so I want to get rid of active and I want to get rid of ARIA current page, okay? So I'm going to run a macro uh, because I only want to have to do this once. So just do QW. I'm going to run it off W. I'm going to go to the start of the line and look for the second occurrence of A, which actually I don't want to do. Let me stop my macro. Third occurrence of A is what I'm looking for. So QW to start, go to the start, third occurrence of A, fourth occurrence of A. <laughs> All right, I'll get it. Uh, so QW, go to the start of the line, fourth occurrence of A. Okay, and then what I want to do is delete Word. Okay, and then I want to go to the start of the line again, and then the fifth occurrence of A. Okay, and then go into visual mode, go all the way up to here, and delete. Okay, and then I want to go back and then go down one, two, three lines, stop my macro. I'm going to do two at W and okay, so I moved that stuff out of there. All right, and so now what I'm going to do is I want my contact blog and pricing. So I'm going to delete the word here, insert uh, contact. Okay, go down here, delete the word here, insert pricing, and uh, go back here, delete the word here, and insert, insert, oh, whoops, actually, I want to do blog first, sorry, blog first, and then go here uh, and do pricing, okay, and all right, so we got that, um, I'm just going to space this out a little bit. Okay, and by the way, I'm using Vim, so if you notice me typing JJ or KK, that's moving down and up uh, for NeoVim and Vim. Okay, all right, so now we've got to close out our unordered list. Okay, and then after that, we're going to close out the div, which is the collapse, navbar collapse. That's this div right here. And then after that, we want to close out our container div. Okay, and we want to finally close out our nav div. Okay, and so now, you know, if we 
So now we're just going to put a comment that um, this is the end of the nav bar. Okay. And I'm going to save this file. And I have a couple projects in here. So uh, we want to do Tim web design and we want to view it. Okay, so we've got that, that first part. Um, you notice up here, we've got that first nav menu. Okay, so we've got that part complete. The body background is a little different than your typical bootstrap. It's more to match this color here, which is, I matched it off of this image. So basically, if you're wondering, how did I get these colors? Well, I matched the primary color off of here, the secondary color off of here, and the light color off of there, okay? So I, I tried to match my these images that I'm getting from undraw.co, okay? Uh, all right, so let's get to our hero section now. All right, so I'm going to uh, start my hero, so I'll make a comment just so, you know, someone reading my, my code can easily figure out uh, what's going on. And we're gonna have a div with an ID of uh, primary. This is, uh, no, we're gonna have a div with an ID of hero. And the class we're gonna have is BG secondary. Okay, uh, with a padding on the top, five, that's a bootstrap class, padding on the bottom, five. And we'll close that out. And inside of that, we're gonna have a div with a class of container. Okay, and then inside that, we're gonna have a div with a class of row. Now, when you do bootstrap, you have, you have to put the div with the class of row, and then you can use the columns. And Bootstrap is based off of the 12 column system. Okay, so our first column in the hero is going to span on large screens. It's going to span five columns. And how we do that is column col lg five. Okay, within that, we're gonna have a third level heading with a class of text light and text uppercase. So we're going for a slightly bolder look. And with inside of there, we're just gonna have web design. Um, and then we'll close out our third level heading. Okay, below that, we're gonna have a paragraph with a class of um, <clears throat> FS3. This is the font size three. It's a uh, bootstrap font size class. We're gonna have text uppercase. That's another bootstrap class to get your text uppercase. Text with the color of light, which is what we defined in our SAS file. And font weight bold, which is what it sounds like. The font weight is bold. That's a bootstrap class. Okay. Uh, now within here, I'm just typing defined. <laughs> Period. And actually, I had oops, it's trying to go up there. Uh, we had web design. Period. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to close out the paragraph there. Okay. That's our entire paragraph. Just defined. Okay. Uh, which is not a full sentence, but whatever. All right, next we're gonna have a paragraph with a class of FS4, so that's a slightly smaller font. FS1 is the largest, FS6 is the smallest, uh, unless you come up with your own custom font, which we're actually gonna do um, right at the end. I'm gonna put that as an inline style for the uh, footer, but uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Well, in a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna have text, dash uppercase, um, text dash light, and then font weight bold again. So we're gonna have all those classes. And then within here, I'm gonna say build, since we have a unicorn, build your inner unicorn, period. Close out that paragraph. Okay, and then we're gonna have, we're gonna do a little bit different. We're gonna have a paragraph with an unordered list inside the paragraph. 
Uh, text size is going to be fs-5. Text is going to be uppercase. Text light and font weight bold. Okay. And then within that, I'm going to have just HTML, the break, CSS, the break. Now, I don't have to put these in capitals because it's going to do it for me because I have text uppercase. Uh, and then, okay, and then in here, we're going to have an unordered list. And inside my unordered list, I'm going to have an li with a class, list item with a class of text primary. Now, I'm not going to type out all of these items. So what I'm going to do, go to normal mode, yank, yank, and then one, two, or we have three, four, five, five of those, okay? First one is going to say bootstrap. Second one, tailwind. Yeah, we're putting all the, the hot, hot things. Balma, the hot frameworks right now. Um, foundation. And then, look, we're using, we're using SAS for this website. SAS, okay? And then we'll close out that. Okay, and then we'll close out this paragraph. Okay, now we're going to have another paragraph with the same classes. So actually, I'm just going to go up here, yank this line, and paste it. Okay, and then within that, we're going to have JavaScript with uh, line break, uh, and then an unordered list. And again, um, I'm just going to go up here and yank this. Uh, okay, so we're going to have five of those. And in this one, we're going to have React. Okay, let me see what I had. React. Um, this one, Angular. And this one, we're going to have View. And this one, we'll have Svelte. Whoops. And in this one, we're going to have Type. Oh, let me undo that. In this one, we're going to have TypeScript. Okay. Now we're going to close out this unordered list and then close out this paragraph. Okay. Um, below this, we're going to have a button with a class, a couple of classes. First one is BTN. Second one is BTN large. That's a large button. BTN primary. That's going to give us with our new defined primary back color and then text light. And it's just going to say learn more. We're not going to have it go anywhere. This is just for presentation purposes. Okay, at this point. Um, and then we're going to close out this div. Okay. And uh, so next up, well, actually, let me close out the next div. So we closed out our row. We closed out our column. Let's close out our container. And let's close out um, the actual hero uh, ID. Okay, and let's go. This is what we want it to look like. We'll refresh, and we see we've got the left-hand side of this without the unicorn just yet. But we're going to get our unicorn, okay? Um, all right, so to get our unicorn picture, we're going to go to undraw.co, and we're going to browse. Use these photos for free. According to the site, uh, so we're going to look for a unicorn. And when we do that, that comes up. We're going to download this and we're going to show it in our folder. You see, I've done this already, but uh, I'm going to rename this just unicorn. Okay, and then I'm going to copy it and put it into that folder, Tim Web Design. We're going to create uh, folder for images. Okay. And I'm going to paste that in there. 
Okay, so now we've got our unicorn in there in that folder. All right, so we're going to go up uh, a little bit and we're going to start a new div after we've closed out the column uh, column dash lg dash five. And this one's going to be a div with a class of column dash lg dash seven. So remember, Bootstrap takes 12, 12 columns across. So on the large, we're going to have the first one be five columns a lot across, the second one be seven columns across. Okay, and in there, we're just going to have an image with a class. Now, we're going to have a couple classes here, MX Auto. So margin on the X axis is auto. That's going to center it on the X axis. D dash block W dash 75 with width of 75 and margin top of five. That's going to bring it down a little bit. Uh, source is going to be images uh, and then unicorn dot SVG alt equals alt text. I just put unicorn. You do want to put some descriptive alt text. I could probably do a little bit better, but again, uh, and then we're going to close our div. Okay. And we're going to save it and we're going to come up here. This is let's refresh and we've got our unicorn. So we've got our hero section now complete. Okay. So this might be a good time to take a pause and digest what we've done. I'm going to take a pause and conclude this as part one and we'll start part two. We'll go in and build this part, probably this part, and then maybe we'll pause. And then in part three, we'll build the form and the footer. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. Remember to smash the like button if you like this. Uh, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. It really helps the channel grow. I'm trying to do daily uh, web design videos. I don't get them done every day, but that's what I'm trying to do. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. All right.